Thank you, Mark. Well, Colonel Stan Labo, a former army officer, still with us. Now, I'm really curious because when we're trying to analyze this even further, in 2013, we had a school, a science school also in Buniadi that was attacked and 29 students were killed in that attack. That happened shortly after we had the Chibok incident in 2014 April. And in that act, as the, uh, attack, nobody was killed. It's very similar to the Dabchi situation today. Nobody was killed. So do you think when you look at these two scenarios, there's a level of conspiracy that can be proven? Yes, I agree with you, uh, Giver. Uh, I want to see a situation now where Boko Haram is embarking on this for sheer ransom. The fact of the matter is that, and I'm still insisting, they've been defeated, they are dashing off in disarray, and of course, do not forget that they are factionalized. The negotiations we had with a faction that held some of our girls, who eventually released them to us. Whatever may have gone through, I mean, gone on in the course of that negotiation, and whatever may have resulted in their releasing those girls to us, other factions may not have shared out of whatever the rewards were. And since they too realize that, look, the game is up, what can we grab to be able to make something out of this thing, since it's now go home time. Those are the lines of actions I see happening. Let's also make some approach or some moves and see if we can get some other kids. And invariably, they cut our spans down and they were able to get these kids. At the end of the day, it's going to boil down to ransom. No girl is going to be killed. Now, if we, are, if we are that desperate in getting these girls, I think we can get them. They are moving in lorries. Definitely they are not being shuffled by air to any country. If they are moving into neighboring countries, they are moving through the forest with lorries or on can, foot. You believe we can get them through military action and not negotiations? Whichever, but military action, I will not, I will not want to suggest a rescue military action. We might, at the end of the day, through military action, not get them completely. Is it possible? But if military can provide the intelligence, mm. using all our surveillance aircraft and all the do equipment we have, to have at our disposal. Do we have? Of course we've got surveillance so, aircraft. So Your airport has got surveillance aircraft. So we have an idea in what direction those trucks are moving. We can only play with what we have at hand. That's what I'm saying. So Good. If so they are moving direct... trucks yes. and we have surveillance aircraft, yes. does that mean that we have an idea what direction they are moving? Definitely they will not be moving in the direction to Lagos or Abuja. So we all know they should be moving upward, not what? what if and that's are... towards the borders of our neighboring countries. But what if they are moving inward? To Lagos. Inwards to where? You see, I ask this question because... I. Oh. I'm coming to Colonel Lam. Yes. There's this notion out there, and some, com some schools of thought have it that the insurgents are playing mind games. I mean, before now we heard, before the ca uh, ca abduction, rather, sad incident, as you mean, we heard that Shekau was on the run, disguised as a woman. And then the army came up with a, 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 a reward for information to capture Shekau. Is it not possible that this is just about mind games with the Nigerian military, trying to put them to one side and then they take off to the other side? We're talking about warfare here, my brother. All sorts of tricks, propaganda and what have you will come into play. And that's why, personally, right from the beginning of all this, I have always said, look, our propaganda machinery must be well put in place. Is just the way the Biafra has had during our last civil, the last civil war. Is it in place? Well, to me, it has not attained the level I really want it to be yet. Okay? We've got good hands there, and they can do far better. The role NOA should be playing, it is not playing it. The military is doing, playing its own role. But what's the NOA doing? It's still sleeping. As far as the whole of this... So there's a chance that these all mind games? Of course. Nothing can, nothing can be taken for granted.
We are talking about warfare. We are talking about look, nothing can be taken for granted. You don't just ignore any point that is given to you. Look at the possibilities inherent in it. It could be. It may not be. But the point is, like I was trying to make, is that look, can we get these girls? Yes, we can. Will we get them? We will get them. No. Definitely. I have no doubt. No, you, you we, about the, 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 vigor, sorry, okay. Okay. the vigor with which the military is setting out towards getting these girls, we will get them. Using all we have in our arsenal, our air power and the land forces going into a joint operation, we will get enough intelligence on these girls that will be able to enable us to know that, oh, they are either gathered here and this is how fortified the place is. Do we go in? Oh, we shall lose some if we, can, if we want to go in. Can we negotiate with the leadership that is holding them and things like that? We should be able to get this information. Colonel Lambo, you, you, in all your analysis, I've, I, 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 didn't, I saw something missing. And that element is the element of the police. Yeah. Colonel, uh, Mr. Bish in Abuja did uh, touch on that a little and yes. uh, trying to see if the police can have a major role to play because it is civil that when the army has moved in and moved out, the police steps in. Yeah. In this situation, now that the army has moved out of that place and then a week later, about a week later, we're having this Dubchi situation. Yeah. What role should the police be playing? The question I want to ask is, was there a proper handing and taking over to civil authority when probably the military was leaving that location if they did actually vacate the location? All right? Because I would expect that if the military is moving on to other areas, paramilitaries should be taking over such locations to avail enough security, be it police, be it NSCDC, whatever. And by now, frankly speaking, I was thinking, all our schools in the northeast by now i'm not saying we should plant uh, uh paramilitary personnel in nearly every school but some level of patrolling some level of surveillance should actually be taking place especially in the northeast given our experience from what happened in chibok so that we don't leave our kids in the hands of being uh, expose them to so much danger if the police had probably played some role in the absence of the military. Maybe, maybe this would have been avoided. But then, if we want to start analyzing the police issue, it will again take us down to the issue of manpower, this, that, and so on. At times, I don't want to look at some of the extraneous factors. But unfortunately, you cannot help it. Has the police enough men to actually play some policing role in the entire notice? given the role it has to play in other parts of the country? These are some of the questions we ask. Frankly, the police would have played a role there, which could have helped, and of course, other paramilitary. What is the NSCDC doing? If we have a powered manpower, can we just engage, bring in, employ more people, train them? There is an unemployment situation all over. Why are we still talking about manpower in the police and the military? I'm afraid that that's where we're going to have to leave it. Uh, Colonel Stan, Hassan Stan Lambo, former army officer, thank you so much indeed for sharing your thoughts with us. I appreciate we're it. going to shift our focus to something entirely different, and let's go to Abuja for that. Malgwe.